morning everybody it's another new day it's thursday how you doing our topic of conversation for you guys in the comments section today is once again related to the shortage of truck drivers now remember what we talked about last week yes there's always been a shortage of truck drivers that's been for decades that's why there's many people who come here from all over the world to drive truck because we need drivers and there's not enough people here not enough Canadians here who want to do the job for some reason. I think it's an awesome job and I think you would love it as well, just as well as I do. But for some reason, millennials around my age want to start at the top, at the top bracket of wage. They don't want to start at the bottom, work their way up. So uh, with that attitude, it's very hard to get people into the industry because you have to start somewhere and work your way up. You can't start at the top. But anyways, all you hear on the news and media, even on like uh, podcasts online, they're talking about the shortage of truck drivers. Nothing's changed. There's still a lot of truck drivers out here. Yeah, there are supply chain issues. And we're gonna talk about this. Uh, if you wanna go to transportationnation.com and click on their article, it's called Shortage of Truck Drivers Not to Blame for Worsening Supply Chain Crisis, group argues. It was written on October 13th, 2021. Uh, the author on here is not listed as far as I can see. Maybe it's listed at the bottom. I would like to give credit to who wrote it, but uh, transportationnation.com. So let's read a little bit from here. I'm going to read a little bit to you, and then you can go to their site yourself and give them your traffic and read the rest of the article. I just want to discuss the main points. They write, as the supply chain crisis worsens by the day, one trucking group is urging politicians and media not to blame the shortage of truck drivers. In a statement in response to the U.S. president addressing the nation's supply chain woes, Todd Spencer is a CEO of the Owner Operator Independent Drivers Association, or the OOIDA, said the growing narrative that a shortage of truck drivers is contributing to the problem is false. There have been many posts that I've seen online myself that have been going viral lately show that the problem is not with a lack of truck drivers. The problem is at the pickup and delivery points, at the ports. There's truck drivers that are waiting for hours and even days for a load. Long lineups of truck drivers. Further down the article, it says, Most of what we are seeing is not a surprise to our members who have been plagued with dysfunction in the supply chain for decades. And it's not realistic to expect the supply chain will suddenly operate efficiently on a 24-7 schedule when drivers aren't being fully paid for their time, he argues. Drivers are experiencing the domino effects of supply and staffing shortages, which are preventing them from complying with federal regulations. So what he's saying is drivers get paid by the mile on the road. When they're sitting there waiting for a load, they're not getting paid. So they're sitting there waiting for hours and hours and sometimes days for free to get a load from the ports. It's the ports that aren't unloading the ships and loading them onto the trucks fast enough. Now, I'm not an expert in any of this. I'm just reading you the news. You can go check out the article for yourself. But I've been seeing these posts go viral on the internet with hundreds of truckers lined up at the ports waiting for a load. And the cranes are just sitting still all day, not unloading any of the ships, not loading up any of the trucks. So I don't know what's going on. I'm way up here in Manitoba. We're not a port city. We don't have a big port here, but we do have trains that bring in the containers from the ports as well. And if those guys operating the forklifts or those big machines that unload the trains here onto the trucks, if, if they're just not working or if there's a, uh, an employee shortage on their end, well, yeah, it takes a lot longer for the containers to get unloaded here at the train train stations as well and at the rail yards. But at the port cities on the coasts, they're having problems unloading the trucks fast enough. We, we shut everything down for, for a while, right? Everything was stopped. And now to kickstart everything, everything's backed up, everything's backlogged, plus you have a shortage of employees unloading trucks. It's not entirely a trucker shortage that's causing the supply chain issue. Like I was saying last week, yeah, sure, there's a, there's a truck driver shortage. We're all fighting over the same pool of drivers. We'd all love you to come work for us. But it's not just that. The media and politicians in Canada here as well seem to be blaming it purely on a trucker shortage when there's a whole lot of other factors at play as well. Does that make sense? The link to Transportation Nation is down below. 
uh, the, in the description of every one of my videos. At least it should be there. If for some reason it's not, it's easy to find, transportationnation.com. And you can go find the article for yourself. It's, it's a very interesting read. You know, I, I don't want to get into the into the trap of, you know, finger pointing. Oh, it's not my fault, it's their fault. Or, oh, it's not their fault, it's, it's their fault. There's a lot of issues at play right now and we are in the middle of a supply chain crisis in some regions. Like I said, Manitoba's not a port city. There's always been a shortage of drivers here, but I don't think we're feeling the effects as much as the people on the coast. The American Trucking Association has long argued trucking is plagued by a labor shortage. Like I've been telling you, of course there's a labor shortage. Oh, there always has been. It's not new. This isn't a new thing. The news is just talking about it all the time now. And every time I hear it, I roll my eyes. I'm like, this isn't new. This didn't just start this year or last year. This has been going on longer than I've been alive. We need truckers. That, that That's a fact. But it shouldn't be blamed for the supply chain issues right now, is what, what I'm saying. So the U.S. Senate's recently passed a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. One point, that's a lot of money. It includes an apprenticeship program which will allow U.S. drivers as young as 18 years of age to operate big rigs cross-country. I agree with that. I got my big rig class 1 license, my CDL, when I was 18. Because here in Canada, where I'm at, in Manitoba, you can do that at 18. And I make that that makes perfect sense to me. When you're 18, you're old enough to be trained in the military, to fire a weapon, to go off to war and die for your country. But you're not old enough to drive a big rig across the highways of your own country. But you can go and you know drive tanks on the other side of the world or <laughs> go to war. So I agree with that. Yeah, they should lower the age to uh, because by the time drivers get to or by the time kids get to the age of 21, they've already decided on a career path. You know, when they get out of high school, they go through college. By the time they get out of there, they're not thinking about trucking, they're thinking about something something else. So we want to grab them as young as possible. And I think 18 is a reasonable age, as long as they're well-trained and responsible. Now, we all know some 18-year-olds out there should not be behind the rig, uh, behind the wheel of a big rig, okay? I, I, I hear you there. But my argument is, if you're old enough to go to war and die for your country, you're old enough to drive a truck down the interstates and highways of your own country. That's that's my opinion. What do you think? Let me know down below in the description. Is 18 too young? It's going to be a very messy day here. Well, that's okay. I'm looking for a flat roll tight. I gotta go to too long. I guess what we were gonna pick up yesterday wasn't ready and it's gonna be ready today or something. I don't know, I'm not in charge of that, but I am in charge of getting that freight and bringing it over here. There's four drops on it. One's going to Utah and three are going into California. So if you want to come drive here, that's a route that you could be on. It'd be kind of nice to go down there. It's a lot warmer there. Palm trees, that's always a bonus. I miss palm trees. Here's a flat roll. Oh, there's one here. No, that's a step. I'm going to see this one, the blue one right here. So see what's in here. See if it's empty. 604. 604. Are you empty? Let's take a look. Definitely not empty. Okay. I'm not taking 604. Put that back in there. They unloaded the freight that was in here because this is the only flat roll tight we have in the yard and I need one to pick up in Tuwan. So the other freight is being moved on to a different trailer. That freight didn't need to be on a flat. Could probably go on a step. Now I have a nice fancy roll tight for my stuff. Big thank you to the yard guys who got this unloaded real quick. Off we go. Like I said, about an hour's drive north. Gotta go around Winnipeg, so hopefully traffic is doing all right. I've been hearing rumors that there are unmarked patrol vehicles patrolling the highways. Going around Winnipeg, so good thing I can't speed. 
I literally can't speed. I'm limited at 99 kilometers an hour. I think it's supposed to be 100 or 101, but it's actually 99. So I don't gotta worry about getting any tickets on the highway at least. <laughs> That's about 60 miles an hour. You know, you try to raise them right, keep them clean, and they just end up getting dirty anyways. But at least I only have today's dirt on it and not yesterday's. I'll probably uh, give it a wipe down here yet yeah, just to keep up with it. As long as you keep up with it, it's not that much work to keep it clean. Just gotta keep wiping it down all the time. But. You know, the weather doesn't really help sometimes, but that's part of it, you know? Some people say, why would you clean it? It's just gonna get dirty again. Well, you clean it now, and if it gets dirty, and you clean it again. That's why I have lots of uh, microfiber towels with me. It's not that shiny, but uh, it's a little bit. It's a little bit. Still, anything looks better clean. So I opened up this roll tight here for them. It's still rolled like butter. This trailer went all the way down to California and back through all kinds of weather into Western Canada and back to the yard. And uh, it's still rolling good. The last time I loaded this trailer was a few weeks ago, week or two ago. And I gave it the bull snot treatment then, used greasable on those wheels. Now the old uh, lubricant we used to use used to you know, wash away every rainstorm or snowstorm it went through and I'd have to do it every single time. This trailer came back this time, it opened up smooth as butter. That greasable is still working good. So again, product does what they say it does. Uh, if you're wondering what product that is, uh, all the bull snot lineup is uh, at brownox.com. You can find the link to that below this video in the description. There's a whole bunch of stuff down there. You can scroll down till you see Brown Ox, I think I have it labeled Bull Snot, and then you can click the link there. It'll take you to the site where you can look around the store there and check out all their products. They, they do work, that's all I use. Uh, so I got a whole pocket full of these microfiber towels in here. These are the ones I'm using today. This is the one I'm using right now. This is one of my dirty ones. It's what I use to wipe the dirt off the truck with, and then I would polish it or clean it uh, with the visible with a clean rag, but for now, I'm just trying to keep as much dirt off the truck as I can. Cause I know as soon as I get on the highway, it's gonna be right back on there, but at least it'll be new dirt and not old dirt. And I'll do it again when I get to the yard. When I get a chance there. You see this, this is all, there you go, you see? It just needs a little bit of love. A little bit of, just a little bit. Just get all that dirt off of you. Dirty. We are fighting a pretty strong wind again. The wind is coming from the south. We're headed south right now, right into it. Sort of like from the southwest over there, but it is supposed to get warmer this weekend. 
maybe this wind is carrying some warm weather with it. We'll see what happens. But the last time we drove through here, there was a lot more leaves on these trees. And it does look a, a, like very wintry out here, doesn't it? Like, doesn't it sort of look like it could snow any day? It's mid-October right now, so sometimes it does, maybe it will. Sometimes we have snow on Halloween. We go trick-or-treating in the snow. It sort of limits you to what kind of costumes you can wear. Because they gotta be warm. I've got four pieces in my roll tight behind me. Not sure when it's leaving the yard, uh, but I'm guessing it'll probably be leaving today or tomorrow. It's gotta be in uh, Utah for Monday. Far St. George, Utah. So that's like at the southern end of Utah. There, I've been through there before, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's like a three-day drive or two and a half day drive. So what is this? A Thursday, a Friday, Saturday. So, uh, I guess they could leave tomorrow morning. All depends on the driver when they want to leave. Oh, we got ourselves a winner. Missing a headlight there, my friend. I don't think they care. Oh, your signals are broken too. Huh, how about that? sleeper and they pull it across the prairies but that's just a day cab i don't know why he's parked there it's uh i know they have limited areas of where they can park maybe he broke down there four pieces like this one two three four I have to see how much trailer space uh, this actually takes up uh, they want to know I guess for their records so they know for the future so my feet are exactly one foot long isn't that convenient they're exactly 12 inches long in my shoes so it's very handy when you want to measure things in feet I just use my feet well, who knew a foot is a foot long at least my foot you know what they say about guys with big feet right they got big shoes all the space back here yet okay well, let's see how many feet my 
heel up against that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen feet in the back. Let's try it one more time from here, okay? From the edge here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and a bit. So about fourteen feet, yep. I always count twice. Just in case I counted wrong the first time, you never know. Sometimes my counting. Eh, I'm a truck driver, I'm not a mathematician. Don't look now, but there's a real nice peak behind me. I said don't look. I know I can't help myself either. Another rainy drive home. Both yesterday and today have worked out perfect, where I don't have to work in the rain during the day, but both days on the way home, it rains pretty good. So I'm okay with that. I get to stay dry. The earth needs the rain. It's, it's okay. Not too much though. Don't, don't go crazy. A little bit's good. As long as it doesn't turn to snow, right? And like I was telling you earlier, we're expecting some really nice weather this weekend on Saturday and Sunday. Hopefully we get that. My vehicles will stay clean for more than a day. More than an hour, I should say. They don't stay clean at all in this. They look clean, right? When the vehicle's wet, it looks clean. You're like, yeah, nice. And then it dries and you're like, ugh.